Taking a look here at a pack or a small pouch that I put together a while back. Uh, the intent of this pouch was to act as sort of a, not a survival kit, not really a bug out bag, just something that I could keep in the truck in case there was an emergency and I wanted to pack it out. You know, let's say we're out rock hounding or geocaching out in the deserts here and truck breaks down to the point where we can't fix it. Uh, either the cell phones and the radios are having trouble or you know we just decide it's not worth the cost basically to have someone come out to a remote location so we figure we're going to pack it out of there have a friend pick us up on a main road come back and fix our truck or something so um you know in that kind of situation which unfortunately i've got you know it down because we've had to deal with it before um in that kind of situation it's something that in case i didn't have a pack in case i didn't intend to be out hiking or camping just something with some extras in it so i don't you know see this as being my end of the world uh pack that i use to fend off zombies or anything like that you know red dawn or anything but um just a small emergency pack and the idea being that this pack is fairly small although it uses a Poor example of a pals ladder on the back to attach to the molly uh, system uh, I figured I could use it on a regular belt or you know improvise a strap made out of 550 cord or something to, to carry it like a pout like a over-the-shoulder pouch so um, I'm gonna go through the pack I haven't actually looked at this since I packed it and that could have been a couple years ago already I've definitely learned some things over the time that this thing's existed and I figured it'd be interesting to go through, open it up, take a look at, at the time, what I thought would have been worthwhile to have along, uh, and you know, let open it up for comments or whatever. In the process, I'm going to rip on this pouch because I definitely have um, gotten a, more of a gourmet taste for, for tactical gear since then, and um, definitely look down on this pouch. So one of the reasons I'm taking this one apart is because this pouch is going to be sent to the boneyard, either going to be donated to Goodwill or something, or uh, just you know put on our you know last 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 resort pile not happy with this pouch at all and I guess I'm gonna just start out by complaining about the pouch a little bit if you're interested in the first aid slash survival side of it uh, stay tuned but um, I think that's important for just about anybody um, I don't think that I went out and bought this pouch I'm pretty sure I traded for it and you know whenever you make a trade buyer beware just like anything usually you're getting what somebody else didn't want and the person I got this from obviously knew what they were doing or they were just lucky to get rid of it at the right time so again I the way I described it, I didn't use this pouch I didn't put it on anything and carry it but just in the general existence being kicked around or you know moved from here to there uh, this is totally ripped off and because of the quality of materials it's not that this material gave way and let go the stitching between the two pieces of material simply disintegrated I mean it's just simply ripped apart so um, I think that it's a function of this not being on a true pals grid which is supposedly a, a two inch or excuse me a 1.5 inch um, width here this one is actually uh, about two inches and not that that makes a big difference in a lot of things but in this it makes a big difference because now it gives room for the column the up and down the vertical line to move and you know that could have significantly affected you know this the weakness in this cotton thread instead of using some sort of nylon thread they obviously used a cotton thread and in just the friction of being able to wiggle in that two inch gap instead of the one and a half inch gap um, you know it's given way Aside from that, the it looks like it's been put together by uh, somebody who wasn't paying attention, let's say. Uh, it's two pieces of nylon, but they're all wavy. I don't know if that shows up in the video, but the little plastic insert between the two. Not only is it fairly flimsy, so it's not really doing the job that a, a substantial piece of plastic is there is, is there to do, but it's also just sewn poorly, and it's exposed, and you can see it. And I suspect if I would have used this for any amount of hard use, that that would eventually also begun to fray as you see here and um, you know again given an opportunity for the materials to fail uh, the snaps are horrible I mean there's not good snap there's there's good snaps and there's bad snaps and this is just an example of the low quality snaps and what I mean by that is instead of being a spring steel or a you know a sturdy type of material like a safety pin it's a weak type of material like a paper clip um, in other words you know a soft metal compared to a, a stronger more resilient metal um, Again, for these reasons, I didn't use it very hard. I figured it would work for a, you know, a day trip out of the backcountry, but um, 
I'm, I'm deciding that that's really not going to work either. So I'm going to go ahead and take this kit apart and then put it back together as a, in a more substantial pouch. It does have a hole in the bottom. A lot of the better ones will have a little bit of like a screen material there. Um, don't know if that's better or not, but um, that's just a, an option there. It definitely seems like a pretty big hole um, for the bottom of a pouch. This uh, buckle has no type of name brand on it, which I'm always weary of. You know, a decent quality buckle is going to have a name like this one. Uh, it says it's a Duraflex 25 millimeter side squeezed by National Molding. So, you know, they're proud of their, their workmanship. They're proud of their company. They're proud of their product. They want to get the word out there. They want to let people know if you have a problem with it, here's who you contact to, to talk about that problem. Where, you know, no name brand, definitely a ripoff of the, you know, the actual stuff. In fact, there's very little difference between them, except for this feels like a more resilient, um, I want to say like a Glock, you know, like a, a piece of firearm type of material where this just feels like something from a dollar store and I suspect oh well look at that I really wasn't pushing very hard and I just busted the side off here on the video definitely didn't intend to do that because I just destroyed a piece of my gear here but uh, now I'll have the opportunity to unthread this clasp and try to find one that'll mate up with this side since this side has no moving parts it's a little less important how strong it is although it being brittle can be a, a weak point um, I might unthread this find another part of a buckle and see if I can't get it to fit back together. Otherwise, this one's definitely going to Goodwill because it only had the one type of retention. And now that that clasp is broken, you're kind of out of luck. With another, you know, higher quality brand, you're going to get the buckle retention and Velcro. And in an emergency situ in an emergency situation where, again, you might be just manhandling this thing, you might forget to buckle it. It's nice to have that um, secondary retention where again if I was walking out of the back country with this and this broke on me gladly it happened here and not then in that situation but what would I do this has nothing to hold anything in you know this is about to fail so it's almost worthless bringing this pouch along because you have basically set yourself up to carry this much stuff except that your pouch is gonna fail and now you're carrying it in your hand so um, definitely an example of what not to carry um, what I did is I, po I, I packed this. Um, actually, when I first got a really uh, high quality vacuum sealer, because I can feel here that there's a vacuum seal bag in there and that's bringing some of the memory backs for me. Um, so we're gonna take a look at the way I designed this to be used. As I mentioned, the, the intended use for it. So now you'd open it up and you have quick access to one, uh, an LED light. This is a Countycom, uh, fairly inexpensive LED. That is secured to my old Swiss, uh, Boy Scout Swiss Army style pocket knife, um, which just has two bla a, a blade, an awl, a screwdriver, and a bottle opener. So just a fairly utilitarian, very sturdy, well-made pocket knife in a red color that by shoving it in here, you know, just by tension between this larger piece of kit and the side of the pouch, it sort of retained my LED light, which I just kept on top there. So now if I'm opening the pack at night, without having to really take anything out i've got this tethered led light which it seems as though the batteries are getting a little low on um, where i could get to my other tools i have a very inexpensive um, pocket knife with a serrated edge uh, very very inexpensive but it's sharp i've never used it and again for this type of situation if the truck were to get stolen or you know somebody just took this bag or something you know i'm not giving them my best gear i'm giving them stuff that i might have used for an overnight trip or a day hike or something um i've got some emt shears now there's high quality and low quality these are probably about medium quality um but brand new i didn't want to put anything used in here i've got a set of um, hemostats or surgical clamps um what this is um is really because we're out here in the desert this is super useful for pulling out the cactus thorns and whatnot um, and I keep uh, insulated set in there just in case I needed to do some sort of telephone work or some sort of electronic work might as well have the insulated type um, next we've got a set of tweezers which honestly is kind of stupid I bought these real cheap one time so I kept them in the kit but um, even though they're only ounces I might not decide to put those back in because I can't remember the last time I used a pair of tweezers they're just not substantial enough to pull a th thorn out and I guess it's possible that there's things that this can't get out, but then I'd rather have a first aid kit with a decent set of tweezers. These are sort of large and uh, probably more appropriate in the garden or something. 
Next, I got a set of lineman's pliers. I'm really partial to these. I like this style of pliers. They lend themselves to being used as a hammer in a, you know, an improvised way. Uh, they have wire cutters. They have a real substantial pliers that can not only open a, a bolt if necessary, but they could also uh, twist barbed wire, um, you know, bend nails, pull nails. Just a real handy set of pliers. Uh, they're insulated by basically just being dipped into whatever this material is. So. Um, but again, they're brand new, so even though this material may not last for years, it's not going to be a tool I would keep in the shop and use every day. It's sort of perfect for this type of kit because it's the tool I need at the time, and if I only needed it once or twice, you know, it's it's got enough lifespan in it to work that long. Next, I've got the the main part of the kit wrapped in a on a, just a cotton bandana, and then a length of 550. Honestly, I have no idea. It looks like about the parachute length between the guy and the parachute, but I'm not sure. Uh, that knife slash light combo that I mentioned. And then that's the extent of the pouch. I'm going to go back to ripping on this pouch and the materials and the quality of the, mat uh, the construction because it, it is just garbage. And here's some further indication of that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it inside out like we've done on some of our other videos. Because again, this gives you a pretty good indication of what's going on on the inside. First off, we're going to notice that it's vinyl back nylon. In other words, it's made out of nylon that's so um, thin and so loosely woven that it has no substance. So they spray a nylon, uh, or excuse me, a vinyl kind of coating on the back to give it some substance and to give it some shape. It'll mimic a cordura, you know, a thousand denner cordura. But if I had a way to, you know, measure how thick these are. I don't know if this works or not, but if I had a way to measure how thick these are, they're just, they're, it's non existent. These um, have no real substance to their material, and it's really just getting its strength from this vinyl garbage in the back. Um, sometimes what they'll do though is they'll line it with a, a more, more, I guess, sheer version of nylon, like what a raincoat would be made out of or a windbreaker. And uh, the idea being just to uh, take some of the abrasion that this vinyl backing won't take. Um, and you'll notice that it's just stitched on here so horribly and just scattered in a couple of places that it started to fray and peel. And it's almost as if there's another pocket back here. Um, but that's a potential for if you're putting back a pair of uh, EMT shears like this. Okay, now it's just not going right back in because it got caught up into the back panel there. So it's just garbage. Um, looking down, um, they did sort of tape the seams on one seam, but they didn't bother to do it on every seam. Not a big deal, even with, uh, you know, again, a higher quality um, uh, company that's going to be making something with a, a quality material. If you don't tape the edges, big deal, because the quality material doesn't fray so bad. But when you use both less quality material and cuts corners on the uh, manufacturer, what you're going to be left with is material like this that's, that's going to fray easily and begin to fray right away. As I mentioned, I don't use this kit. I don't pull things in and out of it very often at all. And this was a new kit when I started it. And just from, you know, existing, it start, it's, it's begun to fall apart. So, again, I just want to keep letting people know if you're interested in some of these things that keep us from appreciating the cheap stuff anymore. You know, you might be able to buy it quicker because you, you don't have to save up for it. But, you know, you're going to buy it twice or three times. Is it going to fail on a time when you really need it? You know, this is probably just going to Goodwill at this point. Let's get back to the kit, though. As I mentioned, I've got the vacuum-sealed portion in this cotton um, bandana. I'm partial to the three-color uh, desert. So uh, that's the color it is. The idea being for that is lots of uses for, um, you know, from everything from keeping you cool to keeping you clean to... Uh, you know, well, there's a million uses for a bandana. Um, let's bust into the kit here. Because there's quite a few cutting tools, I didn't bother to put any notches or zip ties or any of the tricks to rip open the Ziploc, or excuse me, to rip open the vacuum. Um, we're probably talking at a couple of years now. It seems like the seal has broken, but definitely not, you know, been compromised. This stuff would stay clean. I suspect it might even stay waterproof, you know, for a certain amount of time. I'm able to squeeze the air to this corner and it does escape. So it did lose its vacuum seal. I should probably look back and see if we did a review when we first put this kit together to see, you know, if it was a good tight vacuum seal or not. But I'm going to go ahead and bust into it here and we'll kind of evaluate the set of contents. So I'm using the EMT shares to just cut a nice 
line just below my vacuum seal because I'm so cheap that I'm going to go ahead and use this bag again, assuming it'll hold a vacuum. I'll use it again. I don't care. So um, we've got a piece of 550, a certain length that I sort of just did a quick braid. Nothing fancy at all, just a, literally just a quick braid. Left a little loop here. I think the idea was that I could quickly make it into a improvised little bracelet type of light holder. Um, you know, again, emergencies going down and I can just keep this handy. Uh, of course, being a set of braided or a, a line of braided 550, it's one long piece and I don't know, it's probably three times this length. So just a handy piece of 550 in the bright orange color. This is a Russian tourniquet, just basically a massive rubber band. Super substantial though, really happy with these. Um, you know, people don't give the commies enough credit. Uh, they'd like to do things simple and to the point, so not a lot of crap going on with their uh, tourniquets. Just basically a giant piece of rubber band, um, real overbuilt, and then a piece of metal to kind of keep it clasped. A little more crude than some guys want to use, but for the combination of compact and durability, I really like it. I stuck it in the vacuum seal, because again, I just got the vacuum sealer when I put this together, and it looks like it did lose its seal, but again, not compromised. That might just be the bags for all I know. Got a couple of um, glow sticks, a uh, clear one and a blue one, made in Mexico. Do they have expiration dates on them? I haven't come to a conclusion whether or not I like these things or not. Oh, my expiration date is 107, so I guess I should probably test these out. Um, I'm not their biggest fan of, safe, of uh, glow sticks. I've read a lot of stuff on the internet from guys who do caving, and of course, when you're in a cave, you care about lights pretty good, and uh, I t I'll accept their advice. So I recommend highly if you um, have any question in your mind as to whether or not you're going to carry around light sticks. For me, it's a dollar or more and uh you get a, you know maybe an evening's worth of efficient light out of it if it's a, an intended purpose is to be the signal then i can appreciate them but if their intended purpose is to be light light source in a in a survival type of kit i'd much rather use the weight on an led light which is going to last multiple days as opposed to one chemical thing that's going to last once again i'm sure there's certain circumstances where those are totally appropriate but they haven't made me uh 100 percent um on board with them yet uh, anyway, like I mentioned, the cavers uh, find that half the time those don't work, and I'm too cheap to bust all my lights to see if they actually work or not, but I think I will probably bust those two just to see how well they stood up over the time and since they're, at this point at least, a couple years past their expiration date. Next we've got the 6-inch emergency bandage. Um, this is the larger version, basically an Israeli-made um, compression bandage used for ble um, bleeding control. Uh, this one is still in good shape. Uh, it's got its, its factory seal and uh, its expiration date, at least at this point, is still a couple years away. So that one should be definitely be able to be reused. I've got a couple of packages of Curlix, which is basically just uh, you know, a lightly woven uh, hemorrhage reducer uh, you know, bandage. And then a longer piece of um, gauze, uh, like a, what, a six inch roll of gauze. Basically bought these off one of the online catalog places a while back. I think these are from like the Swiss military. They're not sterile, but in a you know combat situation, who really cares? You know, I'd rather have my blood in my body than worried about if the the wound is gonna heal up real great, um, at least at that moment. So these were un these were unsterile. They were just loose packed, but I got them at a great price. I think they were like a quarter or something. So I got dozens and dozens of them. I keep them in all my kits. They're kind of big, but I like the bulk. You know, if I can I can apply this right away. I don't have to think twice about using it. I'm a cheap guy, so I'd probably think twice, you know, even if I had a fairly substantial wound, whether or not I want to waste my uh, product on it. And in, in, a, in, a, in a survival situation, if you get one, one, da one injury and you waste your whole first aid kit on that injury, you're an idiot because then you can just easily get injured, you know, standing up and walking away from, you know, that first one. So I don't like to use all my stuff unless I really, really need to even in a survival situation. So again, having this big piece of gauze that I don't have to think twice about is, is, is worth having. In other words, I can keep my sterile gauze ready in case I get a, a more crucial injury or someone else gets an injury that I might care more about helping them than I care about helping myself out. So that's what I put in this kit. I gotta say it's a pretty stupid kit now that I'm looking at it. It was sort of a combat trauma kit mixed with a toolbox. So uh, just not real uh, thought out, I don't think. Um, some of this stuff should probably go 
well this stuff should go into smaller trauma type pouches especially the you know the emergency bandage and the the, the tourniquet having the tourniquet inside so many layers of packaging was totally stupid you know when you need a tourniquet you need it yesterday not you know after you have time to dig for it and remember what bag it's in or whatever so i'll pull some of this trauma material out i think i do like the concept though of having some simple tools if i have to traverse you know fences and you know any kind of potential uh you know camping type of situations i might encounter or just need a you know a spare piece of uh, building material or tool i think i'll go ahead and keep the rest of this kit as is of course put it in a more substantial pouch